Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again on Commission Ed. I'm Reed, and today we're going to be talking about undergraduate pilot training or UPT. This is a really important topic because what do we do in the Air Force? We project air power and we need pilots to do that. So anybody who's going to be in the aircraft uh, as a pilot, as the aircraft commander, will have to pass through some form of undergraduate pilot training or UPT. Exactly. And again, it's a pilot's Air Force. It's a key part of our identity is what we do. And it's the first time that you, as someone who's been selected, you've competed, you finally made the cut, you've commissioned, and now you're gonna start flying for the Air Force. And so it's a really big deal for a lot of folks. And a lot of the traditions that happen there and patterns that happen there, they feed into the rest of the Air Force. So we're gonna start with, actually not UPT, it's initial flight training. That's right. So even before you get to your undergraduate pilot training, if you don't already have your uh, private pilot's license or uh, significant flying experience prior to your selection. You are going to Pueblo, Colorado for a few weeks where you're you're going to learn basics of, of how an aircraft works, do some flights, get start to get acclimated to how aircraft operate in the sky and how you will operate inside the aircraft. After your time at IFT in Colorado, you're going to move to one of four primary pilot training locations. Uh, we've got a few in Texas, one in Oklahoma, and what are, what are the names of the bases, Colin? So those different bases are Vance Air Force Base, Columbus, Laughlin, and then the special one is at Shepard Air Force Base, which is NJET, or Euronado Joint Jet Pilot Training. And only a few select folks are gonna get into that training. Uh, it's already hard to get to be an Air Force officer. There's a cut you're gonna have to make there, and then it's harder to make yet the cut to pilot. Well. These folks that go to NJEP are a cut of a cut of a cut. Very high priority, very high uh, skilled folks that go to NJEP. Um, so we're not gonna cover that one in too much depth, but the basic pattern is the same for what they can expect at training. Yeah, regardless of where you go for your pilot training experience, whether it's NJEP or regular UPT, you're gonna follow essentially the same sort of pattern. You're gonna start very heavy into academics, starting to learn the, the physics and the mechanics, and some of the theory around uh, around flying. And then from there, you're gonna start adding in some simulations to support uh, the application of what you learn in the, in the classroom. Yeah, after a few weeks of heavy, heavy academics, starting to add some simulations, then you're gonna actually get into an aircraft. The first aircraft you're gonna start to qualify on is the T-6, and that is a twin seat aircraft. So you're gonna have a flight instructor with you or an instructor pilot or IP and you as a student. And as soon as you start to get more capable in that aircraft, the academics are gonna to start to taper off and then it's gonna be simulations and flying primarily. And once you're really competent in that aircraft, it's gonna be just flying almost exclusively. Yeah, and this is not a short process, right, Reed? The, the whole thing from academics and sims to adding in the flying to getting to the point where you're comfortable in the aircraft and that's all you do, we're talking at least a year, somewhere around 55 weeks or so, depending on the exact syllabus and, and what is required of you at the time. Exactly. So every student is gonna qualify on the T6 and become competent in that platform. And at that point, there's gonna be a slight divergence. And there's three primary paths that you can take. If you're gonna be a rotary aircraft pilot or fly helicopters, you're gonna to go to fly the Huey, the H1. If you're gonna fly crewed aircraft, these are primarily mobility, uh, some bombers and some other large aircraft, you're gonna to go to the T1. And that is, in, it's a multi-engine aircraft, but it's also there to teach you how to fly with a crew. And the last option is if you get selected to be a fighter pilot, and those are gonna be T-38s. Yeah, and the fighter aircraft in the Air Force inventory at the moment is the F-16, the F-15, F-22, F-35, and the A-10. Exactly. And you're gonna follow the same pattern that we established previously where heavy, heavy academics, then you slowly build in some simulations, then you start getting some flights in, the academics start to taper off, simulations start to taper off, and then you become really, really good at doing that thing, which is flying the T-1, H-1, or the T-38. And then once you have finished your, uh, your training in the T-38 or the T-1, that's when you will find out which aircraft you're going to be flying for the rest of your career, or at least the majority of your career. And this is a very special time called drop night. 
Yeah, lots of really neat tradition that goes along with drop night. And essentially, as Colin described, you're gonna find out what aircraft or platform you're gonna be assigned to as your primary military weapon system. And uh, all careers tend to take some cues from the fighter pilot community. I mean, who are we kidding, right? It's Pilots Air Force. And one of those is drop night. And there's a lot of fun traditions. Uh, choice beverages will be involved. It's a really great opportunity, but it's also the culmination of a lot of hard work. You know, some of these folks that, that want to be pilots, you know, some of my students, especially at OTS, this was part of their 20 year plan. They joined as a young, young enlisted member, and they've been working towards this end for a really long time, with all with the objective of becoming a fighter pilot. And so to see that happen for them is pretty exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Once you find out which aircraft you're going to be flying once you leave UPT, then you go to a base where that aircraft is operating and you're gonna go through some additional training there before you finally become fully qualified and capable of operating that aircraft in the operational Air Force environment. Yeah, we've got some podcast episodes where we talk to some recent UPT grads as well as a bunch of pilots from different platforms. And they've got some really good information about how this process went for them and some things for you to keep in mind if this is something you're interested in. We'll provide a link in the description below for where you can find some of those podcast episodes. Yeah, this is really important because Reed, you and I are not pilots, right? Not pilots. Here we are, we, here we are we've described the UPT process, but we've never actually passed through it ourselves. So it's really important that we rely on other people who are actually pilots, who have gone to UPT, they, they've spent some time in the operational Air Force, they've deployed, they've done the mission on, on behalf of the Air Force. That way they can speak from a position of experience and authority in a way that we just, we, we aren't able to. Additionally, we have some folks who have served time as instructor pilots, so they can add even that more layer of what it's like to go through for the students because that's been their primary focus. Just like Colin and I were instructors at ROTC and OTS respectively, having that instructor perspective is really helpful for those who are interested in this as a lifestyle. Anything else before we wrap up today, Colin? Again, we are grateful that you were willing to take the time to learn with us about undergraduate pilot training and uh, how you get into the different aircraft that you're interested in flying. If you have questions, please send those to us. You can engage with us in the Heritage Room. You can send us an email or through the various different social media platforms. Yeah, absolutely. As always, like and subscribe. You can find us on the various social media platforms and at airforceofficerpodcast at gmail.com. Stay with us. We'll catch you on the next time.